Have you ever wondered about the ethics of botched executions where the condemned suffers far beyond what is intended? The concept of botched executions is a grim reality, a harsh reminder of the times when established protocols fail, leading to unimaginable suffering for those on death row. It's a distressing topic, filled with chilling tales of condemned prisoners who endured unnecessary agony due to a breakdown in, or departure from, the expected norms. As we venture into this unsettling subject, let's delve into the historical timeline of botched executions, starting from the earliest cases. Our journey begins on August 10, 1982, with the case of Frank J. Coppola in Virginia. Coppola's execution was a gruelling affair that unfolded behind closed doors, devoid of media representatives. The Virginia Department of Corrections remained tight-lipped, releasing no details about the event. An attorney present at the execution, however, painted a horrifying picture. Coppola's life was claimed by two jolts of electricity, each lasting a brutal 55 seconds. The second surge ignited a macabre spectacle. The smell of burning flesh filled the air, accompanied by a sizzling sound. Coppola's head and leg were set ablaze. Smoke billowing from the gruesome scene filled the death chamber from floor to ceiling, creating an eerie, smoky haze. This disturbing account of Coppola's execution highlighted the horrific consequences of a botched execution. With Coppola's case, the issue of botched execution started to gain some attention. Fast forward to April 22, 1983, and we find ourselves with the chilling case of John Evans in Alabama. Evans was sentenced to death by electrocution, a method that was supposed to be swift and merciful. However, that day, it was anything but. As the first jolt of electricity coursed through his body, sparks and flames erupted from the electrode attached to his leg. It burst from the strap, catching on fire. Smoke billowed and sparks flew from under the hood near Evans's left temple. But Evans's heart was still beating. Ignoring the pleas of his lawyer, the executioners reattached the electrode and applied a second jolt. This only resulted in more smoke and the sickening smell of burning flesh. Still, Evans's heart continued to beat. A third jolt was applied, leaving Evans's body charred and smoldering. The execution took a harrowing 14 minutes. John Evans's case was another horrifying testament to the issue of botched executions. On September 2, 1983, the disturbing case of Jimmy Lee Gray in Mississippi further underscored the ethical concerns surrounding botched executions. Gray's execution method was asphyxiation, a method that, in this instance, led to a deeply unsettling spectacle. As the gas was released, Gray's desperate gasp for air filled the room. These distressing sounds, these palpable signs of struggle, were so profound that officials had to clear the room after just eight minutes. Yet shockingly, Gray was still alive. His attorney, Dennis Balski, criticized state officials for this decision, highlighting the inhumanity of leaving a man to suffer alone in his final moments but the revelations didn't stop there. Later, it surfaced that the executioner, Barry Bruce, was under the influence of alcohol. The man responsible for carrying out the state's ultimate penalty was in fact intoxicated. With Jimmy Lee Gray's case, the urgency of addressing the issue of botched executions became all too clear. So where does this leave us today? It's clear that we're faced with a pressing need to address these grave issues. The stories we've shared today underline the urgent requirement for transparency and accountability in our execution protocols. We must strive for reform to prevent such horrifying instances of botched executions. We need to challenge the norms, question the expectations and scrutinize the advertised virtues of each method. It's time to learn more, raise our voices and advocate for change. After all, isn't justice supposed to be humane?